Jude has so much in common with the wording of 2 Peter chapter 2, it seems obvious that Jude is underlining Peter's warnings, which were given sometime before Peter was martyred in the mid-60s. This epistle was written near the conclusion of the canon of Scripture, when the warnings raised by Peter were coming to pass, and Jude, probably another half-brother of the Lord and brother of James, certainly doesn't pull any punches, does he? Jude fills the page-long warning with real historical characters who are used as warnings to us today. As has been well said, nobody's absolutely useless. You can always be a bad example. Look at all these bad examples. The first three are groups. First are the unbelieving people who came out of Egypt, but perished in the wilderness because, as Jude writes, they did not believe. Second are the rebellious angels, who did not keep their proper domain and are now kept bound by what are called everlasting chains, waiting for their day of judgment. The third group are the sodomites, who defied the divine order for man and woman, who are suffering the vengeance of eternal fire, each one so privileged, yet so lost. Is there any reason to believe that modern apostates will fare any differently? Just like these three examples, Christ rejectors today defile the flesh like the Israelites, reject authority like the angels, and speak evil of dignitaries like the men of Sodom. Their doom is the same. They act like animals, says Jude. The humanistic doctrine of evolution makes animals out of men who act corruptly according to base instinct and have no thought of God. Who are the fathers of this movement? They have gone in the way of Cain, says Jude, have run greedily in the error of Balaam for profit, and perished in the contradiction of Korah. Cain thought that he could go his own way but still expect God's favor. Balaam thought he could love the wages of unrighteousness yet die the death of the righteous. Korah thought he could defy the divine order without contending against the Lord. All such man-made, money-driven, self-exalting religion is an abomination to the Lord, and we should reject it as well. What is such man-centered religion like? Hidden reefs, the word for spots on their fellowship gatherings, empty clouds, barren trees, dangerous surf, unchartable stars. Watch out, these people are nothing but trouble, says Jude and their doom is sure. The Lord will convict all who are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds, which they have committed in an ungodly way, and of all the harsh things which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. Ungodly to the max. But you, beloved, concludes Jude, and here are four secrets of success. Build on your faith, pray in the spirit, keep in God's love, and look for Christ's coming. And what about the Lord? Is he there to help us in difficult times? Oh yes, says Jude. He is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. So we conclude our scripture snapshot of Jude by joining him in saying to God our Savior, who alone is wise, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen.